afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, another wondrous propaganda cast. Me, your host, Imperial Dane. We are off here to the Monday novice fight. And yes, the Monday novice fight, which means less experienced players are at play. Not very good ones. There'll be lots of mistakes. There'll be things to be learned from that. So just keep that in mind. To people, again, it's a regular event every week, every Monday, more or less, unless there's something gone wrong. There will be a Monday novice fight, so to those who apparently didn't get it, looks like you got more to learn. Anyways, we will be watching Jason and here fighting for Germany, for the Reich, for the Speerverband der Müller, versus Vork Jatsis, and we'll just call him Vork, fighting here for the Soviet Union, meeting here for Shock Army, with Jason and here going straight for elite troops. So you can start there, also known as a Port M Company, awfully far away place from the base. Yuri, you're not building a latrine, no need to build it that far away. I, I'm not too late. Yuri, you bastard! Either way, Maxims are on the way there. Pioneer spring out, can I surviving says well. Troops moving out left and right. A Maxim up there for Havok. Rushing straight here for the northern field point. With this conscripts, normally you see the commies doing that, and then say conscripts might follow up and sort of secure things that way. Going for the fuel here as well, going to sense sense what's for Jason. Maxim's heading south. All six men here and a one machine gun of the water cooled kind. On wheels. Here's yeah, Nancy shuffling around a bit. Commerce could easily stand to move on there while the conscripts gain that fuel point. Sneaking back here, and we are noting an MG4 trail line for Jason. Go for the munitions there. Going northwards. He's spinning out a bit too much early on, I would say. I mean, generally, as the Germans and the Wehrmacht, you have to be a bit careful about spinning out too far. It can easily end up in a bit of a bad situation if you're not careful. This so far seems to be working out a bit. In fact, he's going to have some early fuel harassment, a bit aggressive, a bit bold. Not what you'd usually see be done here. But Jason seems to be not so much interested in that. Pioneer's going back already as well. Could he be taking up already having something done there? No. So there's actually no reason it would seem for him to pull back his pioneers. I'm just saying they're going to squat down the way. Another Maxim there on the way, barely an infantry, just several Maxims. Hang up there, Grenadiers, so coming under fire, there we go, the presence of the Maxims have been revealed here to Jason and his Soldaten. Same down south here, Grenadiers caught by another Maxim. And a bit of rifle fire there from the supporting gunners. So immediately two squadrons and off running, Pine is going to deal with the comments up north. Another gun is MG4 holding up there, can't really cover the some more vital points, usually sort of maybe have it down here. Said he's placed up in the church, which is not always the best choice when it comes to this from here to there due to these particular sets of bushes, which actually ensures there's a large part right here that can't actually be covered, allowing troops to sneak out and say pop up a Molotov into the church. And again, we'd always recommend not necessarily rushing an MD42 into a building right away unless it's sort of part of an overall defense and currently. As you might be noticing, that is not quite the case. So it's, instead, there's be a very isolated MD-42 which could be cleared out or might end up having very little to no effect for quite some time. Instead, you know, just wasting manpower. One is enforcing. They're going before turning up the maximum crew advancing. No models are up, by the way, here for him. In fact, he's gone for field infirmary. Pretty aggressive with a third maximum on the way. Again, very little infantry. More tools to maximum support up north, that is good. Except for the Russians. Let's put them there again. We are noting this has got absolutely no coverage at all. In fact, could be very easily harassed there by Vog. And have naughty things happen to it. And there we go, moving in with the maximum towards the unguarded fuel point. Maximum on the hand down here, pinned it down. It's a bit hard to aim that thing when. Is that supposed to be in there? Go, go, this what flanking in, forcing him to pull back. No response. Watch over to the southern harassment. Like to make our company up. Maxim here doing nothing either. Lots of things not really doing much here already. 
which is always something you want to be a bit careful with. We're going straight for the fuel jacula. All a bit still quiet there. Now the maximum support the other one here. No response so far. No, say a scout car, which could be used to sort of deal with these interlopers of the Soviet state. And there we go. Two to one arrives. Machine gun on top. Light scout car based on the civilian scout or not scout car design, but a little car design, I believe, alongside the 231. Which is actually a heavier car. So little fun facts there. Moving in here. Engaging with the Maxim. Getting caught here by several, but it's easy to stop up here and get behind it and sort of fly away. But apparently he's just moving on. He's not, you know, finishing off doing with this and just driving around in circles, which would be quite effective. You know, seeing the overall sort of layout of things. Same here. In particular, since that negative cover, the scout could easily hang around here, drive around in circles constantly. But again, he just drives on here. Better always there, I think. We more further forces pushing up here. And not very flexible force at the moment here for Vogue. Although it continues to carry on, the scout car having managed not very much. So far for Jason. Now moving on to some pioneers for repair, that's good. And he's moving straight in front of the scout car. Next to and there we go. Too many meaty bursts into flames at 4. 2 to 1. That sounded a bit painful. But immediately having lost a lot of territory there to the Soviets, so the made some good pushes again due to the fact he wasn't, you know, even covering his own territory. There's a bit of a gap in terms of overall strategy for Jason. And there's nothing wrong being pushing about, but you know, you still need something to cover your own territory. And the scout car he was sending in wasn't exactly doing much of a job. He could, you know, react to that now, and he really needs to. He really can't afford his opponent to get that much resources and territory. Scout car still doing nothing. Come on, Jason, make an effort. Schnell. 251 now arriving. 221 still doing nothing at all. Negu is actually going to knew where the maximum was, even knew what was appointed. I mean, it's right next to the point there, so it's pretty hard to miss it. But he still managed to do that. And he's still not reacting with the scout car either. I mean, really. Jason is not handling this very well. He's allowing his opponent to pretty much wall straight through his territory with a bunch of maxims. He's not getting punished whatsoever. That's a bit problematic, if anything. You have and he's not really having much success in sort of in longer term connect disconnecting his opponent from the fuel either. And in particular, seeing all the way he's spending, and he's only giving his opponent more chance of rush for armor. Scout car finally sort of moving in. Come on, Jason. Machinel. There you go, one Maxim running off. I mean, really, you just drive as close as possible with the scout can just follow up point blank with machine gun on top rather than trying to engage the mate with will be less active. And there we go, field gun arriving as well. MG42 flying down, there, popping smoke for some reason right there. Not entirely sure what that's supposed to achieve. But looks like here that Vogue was a bit too slow to retreat the Maxim, handing it over to his German opponent. And there's all this happening. You see the chest game bombarded here. That would actually be good opportunity for the scout car to flank it in with a half chain, sort of cleared out that way. But so far again, nothing is happening. In fact, we got a mortar joining in here as well. But so far, he's actually managed sort of decent harassment. In this fact, there's been no response to these kind of ears. I mean, he's not really sending in to deal with it, partly because he's got a lot of maxims which are elsewhere on the map and no infantry. A bit problematic in that regard as well. I mean, both players really decent at harassing, but apparently very poor at defending against harassment. Which is a bit awkward. Another scout car here. This time it looks to be going a bit better for the scout car. The lighter punches be right here, tank through the Maxim crew. No intent there from Vorg to retreat his men. But we could see another Maxim for one again. No negative covers, generally bad to be caught in. Increases the damage taken, makes well also easier to hit. But the amount of territory being taken back here by Jason is certainly negative already as well. We are taxing infantry awareness going up. Oh, that's a bit of an interesting choice. I suppose my panel. There go. No, Maxim could be going down. 
Remember you took... Oh, there we go. He could steal it. He could do something with it. Maximum north. I mean, again, very little info to sort of form a more solid response. But he's not even calling shock to us, which you'd imagine he'd go for since he went for the commander right off the bat. And he's into pull full pack. They're low on health. Come on, Jason. Save your men. And we're noting, by the way, he had an option of actually popping a stun grenade, but not really much interesting using it. It looks like a bit of troop training we're using on one of the MD42s. An interesting choice that early on. Packs on the way, Panzer Grenadiers on the way. Again, not a lot of fuel, so you can't get armor. Need to be a bit faster there. And the scout car is hanging about for some reason. No upgrade on that yet. Again, there's a bit of a sort of disconnect and sort of both players in terms of map control and moving up forces. We are seeing a tank of a come up here though for Envog. Which should help him a bit. Heavy more to find there on the Maxim. Maxim needs to get away. So look fun. And there we go, looks like he's able to escape for once. Pack arriving, Panzer is on the way, he could take up soon. Half taking gonna find then getting the Maxim, should drive behind it, behind it only on loads of grenadiers. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, tempo lacking, I would say, here with Mr. Jason, and apparently he's also been training up some grenadiers. I mean, that's interesting. No, I'm not entirely sure why he's doing that at the moment. Pardon me, saying you should consider taking up a bit, just a bit. Scout can only mounting much, meaning again that's a large part of Jason's force at the moment. Not really doing much at all. Half track should be pulled back for repairs and reinforcement. I'm not for these repairs. And there goes Chuck to his finally arriving here for Vogue. He's finally into a bit more of a command and just just the heavy mortar. Scout here waiting, could have done with an upgrade. There he goes, Shock to his ring in, opening up there with the submachine guns. And a quick smoke pop. But again, not really much of a tempo match here. A lot of passiveness, lots of lack of aggression, lack of initiative, lack of movement, lack of cohesion. Half tech still not being pulled back for repairs. The gunners could also be moving up, secure the point, but again, nothing like that. Instead, maximum up here, he's able to do the gunners because they've not bloody moved one inch. Jason needs to sharpen up there a bit. And we go half to coming back. And he's moving in there. Mortar rounds on the half track. And that's half track the scout car. A second heavy mortar is in Vogue here going for a rather heavy mortar back. But at the same time, I think he's going for too many support units when he's barely got any infantry, in particular after all those maxims lost. Now he's getting heavy mortars, which certainly won't be nearly as effective in some regards, at least when it comes to pushing forward. Finally getting them upgraded by the way, but also getting Metro H2. Let's get some press in, a surprise. The a quick rifle grenade strikes the Russians and, well, leaves Ivan with a concussion and Bordy as well with no brain. And there you go, finally taking up. MD4 2 veteran D3 firing support. That should definitely cause a problem for the maximum sense will be more accurate and more lethal. And there we go. Scout Karin, you've got shock troopers gauging, tearing through them. That way showing. Oh, but still he's got the fuel point rendered neutral. And a quick grenade there. Does a nice bit of damage there to the scout car. Still, he really shouldn't be trying to sort of knock it out using some machine guns only. At least not that far away. In the end, it's a bit too late there. A bit of poor unit preservation there. Although at the same time, Jason was not displaying very strong either. I mean, his scout car was almost knocked out. I mean, both players here having a bit of trouble in that department still. Jason is so far doing better in some regards, so he's still having a problem with setting up a coherent front line, amongst other things. But still, he's got more infantry, and in larger sense, he's still performing better than his opponent. Largely because he was able to get a scout quickly up and sort of punish. I mean, usually, usually when you go for something like heavy maxims, you might say you get some guards in to cover them up a bit more, not go for, say, shock army. Uh, 
transfer the heavy motor rain here from the heavy motor battery. Scout can need repairs, nothing happening. A lot of cases where nothing is really happening. But all here again we are seeing that Jason is in a rather dominating position. Then again, there we go. Tank on the way. So things might soon change in particular because Santa Tank and is far removed from the front line, any sort of approximate position where the enemy might strike. It's too far removed, too far removed. It won't be able to support its front line troops, which really ought to be there. And set now his infantry is very much exposed here at the front. To raging T3476. Yes, not even a panzer fire going off. So right there, you could see Grenadier Squad getting lost here for Germany for the Spearfair Bandit. Max needs to go in there, so do the Panzer Gunners again. He's actually fact upgrading them with the Jaeger Infantry package. Now that's quite rare. One grenade, look out the Max, but still need to get some out of there. Come on, Jason. Save your Soldaten. Save your Soldaten. Come on, man. Do you hate your Panzer going to use that much? And there you go, looks like he's finally able to get away just as the heavy mortar round continues to fall down. T-35 is taking heavy damage, and there we go, the Pack 40 by the way, finding it up to the front line. Took him long enough. And a maximum in support of the half tank, suppressing the other maxim while getting suppressed itself. And again, going for here, setting up an AV-42 this time, basically sort of cover up there. I mean, there's some. Constant focus of harassment there by both sides, though again slightly again not so grand execution actually dealing with it, despite you know having to scout car sort of rapidly lock it down for Jason here. Going this could easily flank the Maxim here. It seems he's oh there we go, finally getting around to that. Dieter. And they go, comes to engage here with the scout car, the 222. Really letting those Russians have it. Those hey, monsters definitely proving to be a problem here. They're really getting some kills in on the Germans, on the Reich. Crews getting murdered or run off. And there we go, we do see the Supporter McCoy is up. He could cover us too, he could cover up Panzer IV. The options are definitely there. T-34 being repaired, but nothing else really happening beyond that. Pioneers need to get reinforced. Send us the pack. Come on, Jason, make the effort. Again, he does feel a bit slow in reacting. Definitely needs to work a bit on that. Now, go rushing straight into the MD42 veteran fleet and the casualties. He's already going to stream in. And there you go, the T-34 strikes. Nothing to cover the MD-42, the MD-42 needs to retreat, and there we go. The only coast can be wiped out. Scout can't move. Why is he moving it in there versus the T-34? Get it out of there. So over the gun it is. And there you go, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Wasted right there by Jason. Panzerfire's going off. But again, the gun is up and lost. I mean, right here, Jason really displays some horrible unit preservation. There was no reason for the scout car to move there. He knew the T-34 was there. And again, the grenadiers should have been a bit more spread out. I mean, they have a slight tendency of occasionally clumping up like this near a point, and in which case you might want to sort of try and spread them out a bit. But really, yeah. We do finally get a Panzer IV on the way. That should help a bit. Shock troops there. Moving in again. A bit of time since the last one on the move. And the one counter squad he has is already equipped with submachine guns. More heavy mortar rounds continue to fall down. And these need to get the hell out of there. Maxim cleared out here. We have lost an MG team. And stealing it away with the shock troop is a bold move. If you can only just get away with it for the gun with the Gavir 43 is clear out the crew. And looks like that's not the case there. And it's that glorious death was all the Savitism. Maxim flanking about, but again, you know, overall lack of infantry overall minimizes the option Walk has in attacking. His first while foe. And you know, again, when it comes to mining, you don't want to be doing it straight in front of your opponent when you can see the mines going down. That's generally 
not the best option unless you're dealing with a goldfish, which might then, of course, immediately forget your lay down to the mine front from its eyes. But generally, goldfish aren't known for their great coming these two skills. Anyway, it's veteran one here, trained up on the Panther 4. That could help a bit with a Pentamount machine gun, which is sort of upgrading there, that is good. But time for the mid game analysis. Currently, the Russians are very much in the back foot again. The sort of, you know, heavy support weapon, barely infantry approach has not really worked out very well in particular. After the scout car sort of managed to make things out a bit and also some good infantry flanks there. So in that regard, Vogue there's in a bit of trouble. Jason on the hand looking sort of a bit stronger. I mean, he's had a few hiccups here and there, but ultimately he's now got a Panzer IV out. He's got half jack, he's got patch, he's got some infantry, though he suffered some losses. He could definitely you know, stand to sort of aim for more armor in the shorter term. Another Panzer IV would certainly prove quite nice and helpful. Clear up things and he can sort of get the field gun out of the way. That would pretty much leave the entire base open and sort of pushing in with the Panzer force and knocking it up, moving up the packs as well, clearing out the bunker slowly and then sort of moving, marching into the base like a conquering hero. If you can do that, I mean, that's pretty much game over. And again, currently, there would then be very little for Envol to sort of really do about it. You can get rid of that, get rid of the T-34 and that's pretty much G. G! And Mork really needs to get together. He needs more infantry for starters. I mean, he's got way too little infantry. He also needs to get more armor out. And he needs to sort of focus down a bit more. And again, he's sort of trying to push forward too much. Using support weapons, not infantry. And he's rather lacking some infantry for the support weapons to support. Again, that's why they're support weapons. Not because you have to support them, but because they need something to support. Again, they are very much in the role that needs to support, hence again, the support name. It's a bit of a problem there, in fact, there's also a match that could be recruited rapidly for him, to sort of follow up on that. So that would be a suggestion there for N. Vogue. More tanks, of course, as well, and then sort of striking from the north, maybe sneaking about and sort of knocking things out. I mean, there's really a lot of things here climbed up, so a good strike here, or for example, just having a mortar spell rush here, maybe firing off a few prestrition strikes, if you can sort of figure out where things are lying, he could, you know, clear that out, open up things for sort of very solid offense and push back as a burn to the base. In particular, then could have cut off the fuel point down here again. Mines would also be much appreciated. I mean, he's barely laid down any mines, and he definitely needs some mines around here, maybe. And a bit up north as well, that could definitely cause some headaches there for Jason and his panzers. In terms of damage, Jason's sort of ahead in terms of that, but not by an awful lot. So, I mean, in that regard, there's still a chance here for Enwalk if he plays this properly. If. Back to the fight. Cutters, you need to get the devil out of there. Maxim here cleared out rapidly by the Panzer Gun of the Year. Again, the reason why you're a bit careful about sitting Maxims in like that on their own. In fact, now he's got no Maxims. He's got no Maxims. So that was not really well handled. The Panzer IV driving about here a bit confused. And there's Ming to deal here with the crew. A quick stun grenade off grenade could do a lot of damage here. So far there seems to be no interest in popping off a grenade there versus the heavy mortar crew and putting them to rest. Come on. Panzer IV sneaking about here. He could try and flank the field gun. That would be a good choice. That'd be a good choice. Now got mortar crew down. Sneak up here. Come on. Schnell. Why are you running up in front of things? Not flanking them. Maxim sprinting away. All right. Come on, get that Panzer for moving, Jason. Come on, put in a bit more effort here, a bit more movement. Now, in fact, the field gun has escaped. A good chance they're flanking it. I mean, you know, more effort, more speed. I mean, I'm not saying you should be able to pull off 100 actions per minute, but, you know, a bit more than two would also be appreciated. In particular, when things can't set, what happens is now he's got stuck in front of the field gun. Again, he had forces. He knew it was moving back, and still he ended up driving in front of it. Taking a lot of damage there to his Panzer force. That was overall a bit of a waste there of a good Panzer force. Oh, now he's driving up in front of things again. You need to be careful. These Panzers down to uh, less than half health. The few guns moving up. He is really testing his luck here. I mean, the Panzer force damage. He again knows there's a few gun here, and you know. Apparently he doesn't know again that's going to attract attention from a few. And he's not even moving it back, he's not popping smoke. And he lost his Panzer IV. He pretty much wasted that Panzer IV. I don't think maybe got one kill. In the meanwhile, the opponent's tanks attacking his base. 
I mean, he's really making a lot of mistakes, and that was really terrible armor handling. I'm sorry to say so, but that's pretty much the case there. I mean, he didn't keep you know any attention, despite knowing where he was. He didn't react to anyone that was going on, and the Panzer IV was essentially wasted. We have lost our mortar team. I mean, that's hardly good. Now his place is being set up on here by Soviet armor. Another 234 arrives there. And he's actually suffering heavy losses now. He's pretty much throwing away his chances of victory. He's not careful. Panzer needs to be force. Another flamethrower tank burst open. No response from our way to the tank in his base. No tank pulling back. The pack 40s will deal with that. A squad of infantry has been killed. Another unit walked out, though. I mean, Vault is still continuing to waste infantry at a rather impressive rate. Pioneers have been bombarded to death, and again, no real response from Jason. I mean, again, the unit plus is absolutely terrible in some regards. It's like they're not entirely reacting to what's actually going on here and what's actually being sent towards them. Leveled. We're in fact seeing here the infantry company has already gone. The light to make company companies about to follow on. And the shock troop is perhaps about to get mown down into the ground. Ooh, smoke grenade, that's nice. Pack 40 here, firing, good, good. Veterans U1, also good. Targets a weak point. T-34, Veteran U2, but that's about to be Veteran C Kaboom. There we go, kaput. Targets a weak point, on the other. There we go, ow, oh, but still gets to move a bit. And then he proceeds to move away instead of just turning about and shooting it down on the spot there. Not good, but he can call in another Panzer IV. Do it, Schnell! Do it! Crunch was there, wiped out. But at the same time, I mean, a Vought there rather also got a bit too aggressive. He just charged into his opponent's base. Clearly not caring about the fact that a Titanium could be snug up to deal with them. And he's also dealing with all of this and maybe instead of focusing down the Supreme Corps first, which you know could result in him getting caught here by a Panzer soon. But now there's barely any units left. He's lost most of his units have weapons lying all over the place. MD42's maxims, I mean, you know, not very good unit preservation, rather high wastage there going on by Jason. And Vogue for that situation so matter. I mean, he's just spamming shock troopers now. It seems like he's finally in the city needs infantry, but you know, it does feel a bit too little too late. We're about to see this Apoma Court go down. Under but there we go, in the nick of time, the Panther for arrives. Vorwärts! Oh, Mexico Panzerkampfwagen 4! Strike 4 into the heart of the Russians! I said strike 4, not dirt into the eyes! Looks like that T-34 could go down, but not... Oh, there we go, main gun destroyed! Forces moving north here. Then he's holding up here versus shock troops, actually engaging the range with the submachine gun. That's hardly the best strategy. That's to be honest, but there you go. And he even managed to get the T-34 abandoned. An amazing strike of luck that luck there. Right in his face as an abandoned T-34. Christ almighty. s mines are all down a bit here and there. That's actually good. That's not a bad idea. And apparently his opponent there is just marching straight through. In fact, Bot there's barely got any units whatsoever. He's losing terrain again. I mean, had Jason been a bit more aggressive and a bit more coherent, this fight could already be over, to be honest. But again, the way he's playing, he's leaving way too many opponent gaps in his play to leave his opponent chances of getting back into the fight. And there are too many flaws, too much inactivity, too much passiveness, but also a lack of tactical awareness, and again, an apparently an utter ignorance of any well, field gun for that matter. And the pioneers are not even getting reinforced, and they're getting murdered. Field gun in trouble could be cleared out though. Schnell, attack. But he's not even doing that. I mean, he's seemingly not paying attention to whatever's going on here. Now the Panda Ball charging straight into the base. None by the way, anti tank grenades has not been researched by Vogue. 
field gun moving up back here to deal with the Panda 4, unsurprisingly. And Team Slime, that Gation is not paying attention to what's about to come. And he'll make making a repeat of what just happened previously. Oh dear, come on Jason. At least pretend you're trying. He's facing ruins. He's trying to cut his opponent's base instead of trying to cut the units. Half check about to get wrecked. Then he's charging in there. And again, there's no attempt to you know, clear out the field gun. The only thing on the field right now that could hurt his Panther fall is that field gun. But he's utterly ignoring it. He's trying to clear out the tank with the tank come up, but he's not focusing on the actual threat. I mean, you know, pay attention to what's going on in the battlefield. Deal, you know, prioritize. And the immediate threat really is the field gun. That's wrecking your Panzer IV. But again, Jason is utterly ignoring it. And he's lost. Then it is, he's lost. The half tracks and I lost to basically two Panzer IV. All because he couldn't apparently decide to clear out the field gun instead of the Tango Batang Command. Meanwhile, he's basically getting shot at here. The T-34 is doing nothing. He's barely got any units left. Both sides have been utterly hammered again. That's due to again their absolutely terrible unit preservation. Apparently, terrible tactical sense here. And they're just not paying attention to what is actually going on on the battlefield. To a larger extent. I mean, how else can you explain so m repeatedly ignoring a field gun like that? When you have tanks. I mean, that's some um, absolutely stunning display of poor attention. And there goes some other shocks to make it out. He didn't even close in with the Panthers to clear them out. They were just allowed to escape, but he's now repairing the T-34. He's calling in more units. I suppose that's something. Could recruit that Pack 40 as well. Just needs some Schnell. I think he could also get a Tiger Ace right now and just that way try to palm his opponent down. Just finish off the game because really, again, this has gone on for far too long here. Again, the only reason this match is lasting this long is because neither player is capable of finishing off again. Partly due to un poor unit presence again, sees a lot of units lost, but also just a large amount of inactivity. And a lack of minesweepers for that matter. But there we go, we are seeing a tank ready here. It smells like a vodka in here. Yeah. I suppose it makes it a little bit worse to drive in a Russian tank. Yeah. The Germans did capture Sil T-34s throughout the war. In some cases they're actually able to outfit entire companies with T-34s, so they generally they tended to modify them. And some minor thing this will make them a bit more helpful for the crew. But there you go, looks like he's finding his field gun. No reason why he charged that in by the way, but again, many oh, charging in. Shock was wiped out! And now he's barely got anything left. He's barely got anything left. Let's just beat this up a bit and let's see, you know, if Jason can finally do this. You're missing another 254 on the way. Forces are capturing our supplies. The enemy has cut off a sector. Just a bit here. Normally try not to do this, but really, really the best. And there you go, 254 engaged by the other 254. Again, he was not really paying attention to his surroundings. Field gun was a bit poorly placed here. Glad to remind the field of fires, in fact, covered here. In fact, can only ride the shoot around this ankle, so that's not really well done here. Now he's about to lose his T-34 to the enemy T-34 without even doing a bit of damage to the opponent's T-34. I mean, that's really quite impressive, if anything, in a slightly sad sense. Right here now, there's a chance once more for Envox to get back in a fight. Because, again, apparently Jason can't handle his panzers. I mean, he really, really needs to work on his ta panzer tactics and his awareness of threats to tanks because again you know it's really problematic when he keeps ignoring a field gun like that over and over again and again in the negate between one T-34 you don't even land a single hit on it I mean that takes a bit of skill of the wrong kind I mean Enwalk here's got the right, he's actually using his tank's abilities, that's good, that's good. 
I mean, he's just playing some awareness with units capabilities, but for some reason, again, you know, barely any infantry half for most of the fight here. Oh, I think Sam popped back here to Jason or anything. Tiger is soon available. T-34 ignoring all of this, going straight to the base, which is in a poor state. Not a bad idea. And again, I'm just going to speak this up because, again, there's not really much. I mean, he's got tons of units, but they're all clumped up in one place. And there's no response to the fact his base is about to get raised by a single T-34. His only hope really is the Tiger Ace. And there we go. A rare appearance of the Ace, but again, at the same time, the way that his opponents are playing, he's not really in a state to sort of respond to it. There we go, T-34 kaput. Another rush here for the base, which again is about to collapse. And there we go, runs out of victory points. And then the Tiger Ace barely amounted to anything even then. I mean, this was really, you know, a case again of, you know, terrible unit preservation again. And I have to repeat, you know, think about your units to the state they're in, what they can amount to, and if they can't really amount to much, get them out of there. Also consider how to get them out of there in the first place. I mean, a lot of players don't seem to think about that. And that was really a pop massive problem here for Jason and his tanks. I mean, several times he just get his tanks wrecked for no good reason. Again, you know, keep you know, an eye out for all the enemy tanks and all that and anti-tank guns. Try to keep an idea of them. And he apparently didn't, and again, resulting in the loss of several Panther Force priorities. Also, Matt, and again, you know, if you have to deal with a field gun shooting at you right now and a tank with a tank commander, you know, deal with the field gun first. That can wreck your fast thing, can wreck this. I have no idea how he came to that conclusion that he was the other, other way around. I mean, he didn't, didn't make some minds, and of course, his opponent rather failed to you know, make use of a mine sweeper. I mean, over the prompt for Enwalk was, you know, a massive lack of infantry, and to a certain extent, also some reckless maneuvering and a bit of a problem there understanding the, some of the maximum's weaknesses, at least on the novice level. I mean, he was spreading out way too thinly, which allowed his maximums to actually be cleared out easily, and usually you'd see a player, you know, have them supporting each other, makes it much, much harder to throw off. Which is why that makes them a bit troublesome in that, but again, he made them so easy to clear out, that was, you know, hardly a problem. So, I mean, there were a lot of issues there in this match. Again, there are a lot of things that were taking mind, but again, the major are unit preservation, priorities on the battlefield, actually paying attention to what the hell is going on the battlefield, which again, Jason seemed to be a bit lacking in, and also activity. I mean, again, both players, that sense, you know, were a bit inactive. There were a lot of times, again, when they could have been done something when nothing happened. And overall, this match really just went on for much longer than it should have because neither player was capable of really delivering a final blow. And in the end, it rather came down to who had most victory points, and that was Jason in the end, since he largely dominated the fight because, again, he actually had infantry and somewhat used it more than his opponent. So, rather, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this novice fight. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you get a better idea of what not to do. And if you did, why not subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. If not, you know, send it to me, player, and I'll provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.